Hey everyone, Miguel Benitez here with another video helping you on the search for thoughtful Christianity. Today I'm going to be tackling the question, is hell fair? And I'm going to actually be splitting this up into a few videos in which I respond to some of the arguments that were put forward by Matt Dillahunty in a talk called A Discussion About Hell. Before I go any further, I just want to remind you, for more content like this, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and click on the bell so that you receive notifications anytime I upload new content. Before addressing his argument, I want to first show you a clip from his talk in which he lays out one of the arguments against hell. And so I want you to be able to hear from him first, and then I'll attempt to summarize what his argument is and then I'll respond to it. So here's what he said in his talk. Now I've argued before that what some people would consider to be an eternity in heaven might be hellish for me. I'm not sure that I buy into this idea that I was raised with about what goes on in heaven and what should go on in heaven. It makes no sense to me. And I've argued before, for example, my mother is a fundamentalist committed Christian who loves me dearly and thinks I work for Satan and I'm leading people to hell. <laughs> And she also believes that she's going to go to heaven, and she's absolutely wrong. Even if she's right about there being a God in heaven, she's not going, because she believes there's no sorrow in heaven, and there's no way that my mother could be in heaven with me in hell and not be sorry. The argument that Dillahunty puts forward here is an internal critique of the Christian framework. It's suggesting that the view of heaven that Christians hold and the view of hell that Christians hold can't be held together consistently. And so I appreciate this kind of critique from him because I think these are the kinds of arguments that non-believers should be trying to put forward against theists and Christians in particular, as opposed to simply saying there's not enough evidence, there's no evidence, and just waving a uh, waving of the hand um, this is an actual argument that is being put forward. Now, he's telling it in story form. He's giving us an example of his mother, who is a fundamentalist Christian, according to Dillahunty, and someone who believes that she will be in heaven. And according to her beliefs, if Dillahunty does not repent and trust in Christ, he will end up in hell. And he's saying, this just isn't possible. It is not possible for his mother to be in heaven if she's right about what heaven is, which is a place without sorrow. Okay, so I've summed up Dillahunty's argument as follows. There are no sorrowful people in heaven. All people who have loved ones in hell are sorrowful people. All people have loved ones in hell, therefore, no one will be in heaven. Now you'll notice that actually, if we take this argument as is, if I've properly represented Dillahunty's argument, then this is more an argument against hell, heaven, rather, rather than hell. But I think that Dillahunty is making an implicit argument against hell. And that would go something like this. If hell exists, then there will be sorrow in heaven. There is no sorrow in heaven, therefore there is no hell. And so I think this is an argument that is being put forward against the Christian doctrine of hell. But I think it misunderstands what Christians believe about God and about his justice, about his character. In the Baker Encyclopedia of Apologetics, Dr. Norman Geisler writes this in response to this kind of objection toward hell. He writes, The presupposition of this question is that we are more merciful than God. God is perfectly happy in heaven, and he knows that not everyone will be there. The attitudes and feelings of the saints in heaven will be transformed and correspond more to God's. Hence, we will love only what God loves and hate what he hates. Since God is not miserable at the thought or sight of hell, neither will we, even if it holds people we loved in this life. See, hell is not some isolated doctrine 
in Christianity, but it's a system-dependent belief. If Christianity is true, then hell is real. But we also have to understand all of the other doctrines that inform our view of hell. You see, God is far greater than we are. He is far more loving than we are. He is far more merciful than we are. And so we're seeing this completely backwards if we think that as Christians we're going to be in heaven and while a good and loving and merciful God is perfectly fine in heaven while some people are in hell, that we will, because we are more merciful than he is or more empathetic than he is, that we will um, be facing great amounts of sorrow. You see, the reason we struggle with questions like this is not because God is not good, but rather because we don't hate sin the way that God hates sin. We're okay overlooking sin. In our fallenness, with our sin nature, we are inclined towards overlooking sin and not taking it as seriously as we should. We're tempted to believe that sin is not all that bad. But rebellion against the holy God who has made us is no small crime. And so I think that it's important that we understand that we will increase in our understanding and in our view of justice and what is right when we are in heaven with God. So we won't be in heaven miserable because we know not everybody made it, but rather we will see it as a righteous action by God to punish those who have remained in rebellion against him. I want to quickly address one other thing that comes up from time to time. Because Christians who wrestle with this argument that Dillahunty puts forward have sometimes suggested that this, ne this must mean that we somehow lose our memories in heaven. That we don't remember what happened here on earth because we couldn't possibly be happy to be apart from our family members who never trusted in Christ and are going to spend eternity in hell. I think that this idea again undermines the goodness of God. It undermines how just and right God is in his judgments. You see, we have good biblical reason to think we don't lose our memories in heaven. If you look at the martyrs in Revelation 6, where they cry out to God and say, How long, O Lord, until you avenge us? Right? They obviously knew what had happened to them here on earth. Their memories were not erased. But that doesn't mean that God isn't just. Right? That, that's the key here. God is just. So it's not that God has to erase our memories in order for us to find happiness in heaven, but rather we grow in holiness. And as we grow in holiness, we won't be saddened by the righteous judgments of our king. Go ahead and comment down below. What are some of the objections that maybe you have or objections that you've heard regarding the Christian teaching of hell? Thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the like button down below. I look forward to hearing from you guys.